This is Julie Dupree. I'm about to rock your world. Real talk with Big G. And if you like the way I rock your world, holler back at me. Coming up, we have an incredible show from here this morning. Yes, for you. We have the international platinum selling recording artist, Gregory Talent. Remember, shake you down. Well, we're going to shake it up here. Shake it down. Tear the roof I off the mother sucker. Live. I want everybody to sit back, relax, and why the music. Because I'm going to be right back with more of Real Talk with Big G. Making radio. Did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He gave me that low down, stanky, nasty, low down, dirty blues. Good morning, everybody. This is Julie Ducre. I'm the host of Real Talk with Big G. I am so extremely excited. This morning, we have put together the most incredible show just for you. And coming is the international platinum selling artist, Gregory Abbott. My phone literally has been ringing off the hook. Uh, my cell phone has been blowing up with text messages because everybody has been wanting to know when is Gregory Abbott coming on the show? Well, it's here. It is finally here, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot tell you how excited I am. I'm going to be speaking with him regarding his new music, which we're very, very excited about. International and platinum selling artist Gregory Abbott, Shake You Down. Gregory Abbott's music is just so extraordinary. It transcends over time and it never gets old. It never gets old. It sounds like he just released it just the other day. His music is still alive. It's still fresh. And uh, we're going to be celebrating him this morning. Excited to have him on our show. It is a blessing. I feel so, so, so blessed to have him. This is an artist who never stops recording. He just has so many, many great songs. Yes. And he has so many, many great songs. It's really, really hard to select the ones that we want to play. If it were up to me, I would play them all because, like I said, he's extraordinary. There's just not one uh, bad Gregory Abbott song. This man is uh, he's loved all over the world. And what I really admire about him most is, in spite of all the fame that he's had in his music career, He's still humble. He has so much love for the world. And, you know, he is celebrated all over the world for his authenticity. And that's what it's really all about. Being authentic, being organic. I want everybody to go to Gregory Abbott's website, GregoryAbbott.com. He's got new music and you can follow his career, see what he has been up to. He performed in Memphis, Tennessee with some of the greatest R&B and soul artists. I'm only going to name a couple. Peebo Bryson, Denise Williams, just absolutely extraordinary. Uh, I definitely want to talk with him regarding that. I'm sure that he was very, very excited. I see that he has shared a lot of pictures on his website for his fans. You can look at the pyramid that he had the pleasure of staying in. Uh, And then also he has some beautiful pics inside of the pyramid, which is absolutely gorgeous. He's a singer, songwriter, producer, and I'm going to pick his brain briefly this morning because I I really want to know as much as I can about such an extraordinary individual. Ah, yes, international platform. And I'm selling recording artist Gregory Abbott. I'm so excited. Now, this is really a special treat. We are celebrating Essence Music Festival Special Edition with the world-renowned Gregory Abbott. He sold millions of records around the world, and uh, he's celebrated by his fans because of his integrity and humility. Uh, I must say integrity in his music, integrity in creating good music, keeping real music alive. Gregory Abbott, just for you, we started off with Shake Me Down. I'll prove it to you. And he has just such a huge archive of the most incredible music. Gregory Abbott was born in New York, New York. He is an R&B singer, musician, and Caribbean influence. He plays the keyboards and drums. He's a music composer and producer. During his childhood, Gregory's mother taught him how to play the piano and encouraged his singing. Before starting his music career, Gregory Abbott studied psychology and taught English at the University of California, Berkeley. And he also studied creative writing at Stanford University, where he won a Wallace Steigner Fellowship. Gregory Abbott had his first opportunity in the recording studio working on an album for an independent record label that gave him the chance to do a duet with the late great legendary Whitney Houston. He also produced for music group EQ on Atlantic Records. In 1986, Gregory Abbott released his first solo album, Shake You Down. The title track for the album was a success going platinum and topping the Billboard 100.
100. The album's second single, I Got the Feeling It's Over, which reached number five on the R&B chart with the strength of its singles, the album propelled to platinum status and earned Abbott several awards. Internationally, Gregory Abbott carried much success, winning first prize at the Tokyo Music Festival. The title track of his second album, I'll Prove It To You, which was released in 1988, was featured on a Japanese movie soundtrack. Then in Belgium, he performed with Princess Stephanie of Monaco. Over the years, much of his new music has been released via singles on his own Mojo Man Entertainment. Gregory Abbott has continued with his R&B sound. In addition, he has added a Caribbean soul feel as well. In 2011, an album entitled Drop Your Mask was released and Gregory Abbott continues to release new singles two to four times a year. I'd like to say good morning to everyone who is tuning in. Jule Ducre. I'm very, very thrilled to have someone of his magnitude to be a guest on my radio talk show. This is how we make radio cool. Aren't you tired of eating Snickers bars? Aren't you Aren't you tired of not having your spirit and your mind fed? I know that I am. So we strive here on Real Talk with Big G and Julie Ducre to give you the best entertainment possible. By Gregory Abbott. Hi, this is Gregory. Yeah. <laughs> wow, what a, what a wonderful, what a sweet thing to say. You know, I, I love music and I found it such a wonderful source of inspiration and communication for myself that uh, I love to share it. So I'm just fascinated by music and I'm always discovering new things about myself through my music. I'm discovering new things about people as I write songs about different things I see folk going through. So I just find it a wonderful, it's been a wonderful addition in my life. So I encourage everyone to have it in their life. Absolutely. And and you have, uh, you have blessed the world with your love songs. You talk about relationships a lot and you have blessed the world. You have inspired us to keep going and that even if something does not work out, you have inspired us to reinvent yourself because it seems like every time you release two to four songs per year that you are reinventing yourself. You have dual citizenship in the U.S. and Antigua, correct? Yeah, I do. Um, I've met some wonderful relatives. I've discovered for the first time many relatives down in Antigua and uh, I've uh, developed a love for the island whenever I want to reconnect with myself, you know, slow down and center myself. I, I go down there and just talk to the folk and hang out. It, it's a really pristine island. It, a lot of it is still natural. It's not all built up. There's sections that are, you know, very lush and built up, but many sections are just in their raw form and a very peaceful place to be. And uh, I remember when I first went down, I felt this great uh, DNA connection with, uh, you know, where I came from. That is truly amazing. And uh, I've noticed that you have managed to, in in your music, you've managed to keep a certain uh, essence of your your heritage, you know, uh, in terms of Antigua and the United States, um, your, your voice voice is just so beautifully, so beautifully uh, in tuned with every note that you play. Every lick on the piano, everything is just beautiful. It's just run, it runs smoothly. You are a storyteller and it makes so much sense. It just makes so much sense. But you know what? I was listening to your, your new music and your, uh, I described it. I, I've never been to Antigua. I've never been to the Bahamas or the Caribbean. I've always wanted to go. Perhaps, you know, maybe I will go soon. But I noticed that in some of your new music that it, it there's more of a Caribbean feel. Why did you decide to create uh, that type of music like 2011 on? Well, um, you know, as I got more secure in my profession and, and achieved more uh, independence, I was able to do that in a way that was, you know, there was some restrictions earlier on. So um, I grew up on lots of Caribbean music and I always had that in my soul, so to speak and wanted to um, to express it. I also find that, uh, find that through Caribbean motifs and Caribbean rhythms, I can express other, like, social statements and political statements and, you know, handle other subject matter that's appropriate to the genre. So um, I uh, have found myself compelled to do that more and more. You know, we, we live in some wacky times nowadays, and to make sense of those, 
I uh, try and express some of that in my music and, uh, you know, put a positive in on to encourage people to, you know, keep trucking on and keep searching for the good faith. Um, so Caribbean rhythms and Caribbean people and, their, and uh, um, they inspire me to make those sorts of statements. And it's funny, you say you haven't been down to the islands. You know you look like an island girl. Well, I, I have relatives, I, I have, uh, I have, but I've never met, and uh, also in Europe, yeah, in France. <laughs> okay, okay. But uh-huh. you, you know what, it's so interesting, um, I, I just feel so blessed, I'm just so thrilled to have you here, I've been wanting you here for quite some time, because you definitely, you are a huge, and you have been a huge inspiration on the music industry, in terms of love songs, and in terms of smooth, people finding confidence in themselves, because I know lots of times, when an artist is signed with a, or, uh, under a contract with a record company, there are restrictions in terms of creativity or the type of music they want to put out there because Prince fought, may he rest in peace, he fought for a very, very long time, for almost 17 years, it has been alleged, to own the musical rights to his work, but he fought a long time to, you know, finish that contract with Warner Brothers. And then after he, you know, he got his freedom, he was able to create the kind of music that he had always wanted to create. And that's the way I feel about you with your Mojo Man Entertainment label. Can we talk about that? Sure. Um, Well, that's the beautiful spot to be in when you can not be a product for a record company, but be a creator and explore your yourself and explore your music the way you'd really like to. And, uh, you know, there's one thing to be a record seller, uh, you know, uh, it's sort of like fame is one thing and true artistry is another. And if you can merge the two, you're, you're really blessed. But that's what you're always struggling to do. So through my own label, you know, I'm able to do that. I'm able to uh, write and put out what I want to and, uh, uh, and have fun doing it, collaborate with whom I'd like to. And it's not with always an eye towards the bottom bottom line, but an eye towards, you know, true artistic creation. And once you're in a spot to do that, it's lovely. I mean, you're not always in a spot to do that, especially early in your in your career. So you make the concessions that you have to. But later on, when you're able to do that, uh, you do. And Prince has been an, an inspiration to us all because he fought, you know, a really hard uh, battle. And uh, he had to ask himself some serious life questions. You know, do I want the money or do I want artistic creation? And in the end, he got both. Yes. So uh, we all, you know, bravo. You know, we all felt uh, proud of him. And, and uh, he strengthened a lot of people in that quest. And by the way, uh, what you do on your show, you dispense a lot of positive and good, useful information for other uh, would-be musicians out there. And it's a lovely service that you do to them because, you know, it's not uh, given to you naturally by the business. You need uh, folks like yourself that are, uh, you know, telling people what to focus on and and how to look at their career to make it, uh, to keep it fun for themselves and to keep it lucrative and and get all they deserve. And, uh, and uh, keep the keep the ball rolling. Well, I thank you so very much because I I believe in uh, living in my truth and my integrity, and uh, my purpose in life is to inspire others and encourage others to be their best self. I, I feel that we all have certain innate spiritual gifts, and I feel that we should use those gifts wisely. Uh, I, when I had Wonderland Records artists on uh, last Friday, uh, I had mentioned to them what's the purpose of having a brain, and people don't think, you know. What is the purpose of having a brain and people don't think? And so, yeah. you know, we, we we use our brain. We try to work extremely hard, and that's how we make radio cool again. And let me tell you, it could not be any cooler, any cooler today <laughs> if we did not have you here. You are a multi-instrumentalist. <laughs> How old were you when you started uh, singing and kind of tinkering with your instruments? Well, we always sang around the house, and we always had a piano, myself, my older brother, and my mother. And uh, we'd sing harmonies and rounds and stuff like that and uh, listen to a lot of music. And uh, it was informal at first. And then I, at eight years old, I began singing in the church. Uh, and uh, we, we did an album a year and a televised uh, show every year. But then around 13 or so, your voice changes, so I really stopped singing. And you never know where your voice is going to settle after that. I was a boy soprano before that. So I, uh, when my voice changed and I stopped singing, I just picked up instruments. Uh, my first 
instrument was a trumpet and then a flute, uh, which was great for learning single line melodies. And then I uh, got more serious about the piano and guitar to learn harmonies and, you know, multi, you know, the chord structures and, uh, and then rhythm. Uh, so, uh, you know, I've always been just a wash in music and it was a hobby for a long time. And then somewhere along graduate school, I realized that I could do this, and if I took it seriously, it could really be a livelihood, uh, not just an avocation, but a, an actual vocation. And uh, and once I jumped into it that way, you know, I learned all about producing. I learned uh, a lot of the things that you uh, teach folks that uh, tune into your show about publishing, about contracts and copyrights and things like that. It's important to know, you know, what what business you're getting into and, and uh, so that you can keep it sweet. You can keep it happy. Um, you know, if you don't do that, what happens is that the business can overwhelm you and it can start getting, uh, for lack of a better word, stinky to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, uh, you know, you start to not enjoy music as much as you used to. Well, it's too um, lovely an addition to have in your life to let that happen. So you want to keep it sweet for yourself. And you do that by uh, learning about the business part of it, learning your instrument really well, be it a, you know, uh, an, an outside instrument or your actual voice. And, uh, and then growing, you'll find just wonderful things about yourself in life through music. It's uh, really a mysterious and fascinating uh, addition to any life. Absolutely. If you recall, when the digital streaming music started at the beginning of the millennium, there were a lot of, uh, I would say, hesitations. Uh, there was a lot of pessimism about how is it going to work? How are artists getting paid? Prince had a lot of concerns about uh, of digital uh, streaming or downloading of his music because it's very difficult for artists to track their royalties. What What are your thoughts on that? Well, there's a good and a bad uh, he had legit concerns. We all do. Uh, the good is the, the way you can disseminate your music um, worldwide uh, with just the click of a button. They've yet to perfect the monetization of that, though, uh, and that is how how artists get paid. Although they're doing, they're making strides towards that, and once that gets perfected, it'll be it'll be great. Uh, but you want to get uh, one of the uh, collection agencies, um, you know, uh, streaming collection agencies to uh, collect for you and uh, and you know monetize it on YouTube. Wherever your music is streamed or played, you want to uh, make sure your performing rights agencies know about them and so they can collect for you. Uh, so, you know, it, it's a, a, the industry is in a big transition, has been for many years, and money isn't made the way it used to be made, you know. We find that nowadays a lot of our money is made through streaming, ringtones, uh, licensing to film and TV, uh, and ancillary things to CD sell sales. You know, it used to be just record sales and and uh, and things like that, and then more live performing. We we're, um, we're doing uh, <clears throat> you know more and more of that as time goes on. So the profile of the typical artist and how he conducts his day has changed and. With any transition like that, there's the good and there's the bad, and we focus on how to empower ourselves with the new uh, changes. One great thing is that with the new technology, anyone can make a record. You know, with a few thousand dollars, you can set that up a studio, and you're not reliant on the record company for a budget to do an album now uh, anymore. And that gives a power, a lot of power, back to the artist. It also means that there's a lot more c competition out there because everyone can do that. So then you have to figure out ways to be, be authentic and have a, a sound that uh, has your signature on it uh, so that you can separate yourself from the rest of the crowd. Yes, that absolutely makes sense. I want to step back for a moment uh, because I know that your time is uh, limited this morning. You studied psychology and taught English at the University of California, Berkeley, and you also studied creative writing at Stanford, where you won a Wallace. Is it Stegner Fellowship? Am yep. I saying that correctly? Okay. Uh, quite often, I hear horror stories from older uh, artists, meaning artists who've been in the entertainment industry, uh, oh, I'm going to say 20, 25 years, who did not read their 
their contract who didn't even understand what a contract was. They just signed it. The manager said, here, sign. They signed it. Or if, if it was a record uh, deal, uh, the label would say, hey, you know, I have your protection in order. Just go ahead and sign it. I'm going to take care of you. And then some years later, the artist is bankrupt. They're broke. We've heard, we've seen it on television. You know, you can just watch uh, VH1 behind the music, the scenes behind the music and stuff like that. And we hear these horror stories from some of the biggest artists that we would never think this would happen to. Now, the psychology that part that I want to ask you about very, very quickly is, do you find that having that background helped you maintain a certain business sense in your industry to prevent you from being taken advantage of, as a lot of artists have been taken advantage of? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not only do I find, you know, my formal education helped me in writing songs and perceptions of people and what they go through and uh, to reinterpret that through, through song lyrics. But I also found just the research skills that you learn in school, uh, you can apply, and I did apply to my own situation once I got it became a professional in the uh, music business. So you do read your contracts and you do go to the library and research. Nowadays, the Internet's right there. If you have any question about contracts or any aspect of the music industry, you can just pose that question on the Internet and uh, you get back many answers. There's forum. Um, so, yeah, it's in important to do that and it, it definitely saved me a lot of uh, agony by coming in you know with my eyes open knowing the importance you know what to focus on what to prioritize what was important uh, when doing music we all know that uh, oh we musicians know that we love music and it makes us feel good and um, by that one hand clapping that's just one side of the formula the other side is that you have to own your own music and receive the benefits from your joy in doing that music and the the joy you spread to other people by doing that music, those rewards should come back to you in an equitable way. So, you know, it's important to uh, to be abreast of all that stuff. Absolutely. And one thing that I, I cannot stress more to anybody in the entertainment industry, you don't have to be a music performing artist. You can be a stage playwright. You can be a producer. You could be a songwriter. Is You have to think of your art as a business. Yes, we love to create. Yes, we get excited. We get all in our feelings. But it has to be business first. Because they say, they say that 90% of our success, right, 90% comes from perspiration, 10% from inspiration. Do you agree or disagree with that, Gregory? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Um, I know that, it, you know, you do, the, the things that you do best in life are the things that you love to do. You just wake up and it's the first thing you think about doing. And if music is that to you, then you have both a blessing and, a, and you have to watch out because with that feeling, the joy you get from doing music, you can very easily be taken advantage of. So now you have to become self-aware or have people around you that are self-aware that you trust and uh, to protect and put you in a safe place where you can afford to be vulnerable like that, like a creator always is. And it's safe to be vulnerable. You're not going to be taken advantage of. So, uh, yeah, in the early stages, it's a lot of perspiration and um, you have all the inspiration you need and you want to keep the, the pers I see it as, you know, you want to put in the perspiration so that you can keep your inspiration pristine and healthy and happy and, uh, you know, because you always have to be inspired. If, if I wake up in the morning and I'm not inspired, nothing gets done. So I have to protect that inspiration, and I know the kind of ways that I have to feel to make that inspiration come to the surface. Well, now that so, uh, now that you, you know, said as that, you go on, you learn to protect that and treat it delicately because it's a you know it's a very fragile mechanism. Yes, I absolutely agree. Now that you've said that, what inspires you? Um, uh, you know, to not be too corny, but love exchanges between people. I, I love to see people treating each other good. I love hero heroism that you often see people uh, exhibit. Uh, I love to see people courageously going through the different tribulations in their life and trying to figure it out and do it in an honest way, 
you know, not running and hiding, but facing it straight on. And um, I am real sensitive to the vulnerability in people and the strength that it takes to be vulnerable. Um, I'm inspired by life and what I see people and animals and, you know, nature doing. I think uh, it fascinates me. And the more I observe it, the more I learn about myself and uh, the more subject matter it gives me for songwriting, you know. Uh, I'm inspired by real talent, a, a beautiful voice, a virtuosity on an instrument. Uh, that inspires me. And you see it not just in professionals, but in up-and-coming artists and even children sometimes. That kind of stuff inspires me. Oh, and that's so beautiful. And I, I can sense that the vastness of the universe also inspires you so vast. Uh, very, very quickly, you performed a duo with our legend that we lo loved for many, many years and lost, Whitney Houston. What was that experience like, performing with Whitney? Because I believe that was around the period that you were first coming out, correct? Yeah, and uh, she and her mother and another uh, singer named Altessa Weathersby, uh, they were background singers. And um, Whitney was young. She had a young, pristine uh, voice. Uh, she sang well above her years. She was 17 at the time. She sang, you know, in her mid to late 20s. I mean, she had a well-broken voice. Uh, they all sang beautiful harmony. And then I did duets with Whitney. And uh, her command, her power and her command and accuracy was just impressive. And uh, she was fun. They were just a blast with just a bunch of musicians in the studio banging it out. Sissy, her mother, was giving us all instruction. She was the uh, mama bear telling us how it's done. And, uh, and she, she really gave, she was an excellent vocal coach. And uh, you can see the results in and all of what, you know, not only herself, but all of what Whitney did. Whitney was great. She was, uh, and then all through my career, that's when I was first st starting out. Um, all through my career, you know, whenever we'd run into each other, she'd be supportive, and so was her mother. So, you know, I have a lot of love for both of them. Yes, and uh, I was in love with Whitney Houston the first time I heard that melodic voice sounding like a songbird. May she forever rest in peace. Who were some yeah. of your musical influences in your earlier years and your young adult years? Well, uh, I like some of the classic artists like uh, Sam Cooke and Aretha and uh, for Harmony. I, I, I used to love Take Six and Manhattan Transfer mm -hmm. and the Bee Gees and mm -hmm. Crosby, Stills and Nash. You know, I like elaborate, beautiful harmonies. Um, um, I got a chance to meet Miles Davis early on, and he was a blast. He was so different from what I thought he would be. He was just, he was so giving and so funny and, uh, and smart, brilliant man. And, uh, he, 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 he was a really inspiration to me. So was Marvin Gaye. Marvin would let me come into the studio with him and sit down, and it was fascinating to watch him perform, uh, you know, just create right there in the studio. And then we'd go out, uh, back later on and play basketball and somehow or other I was always given the task of guarding him and uh, that was fascinating too because he had the same command on the basketball court as he did in the studio. Wow. <laughs> yeah, quite an interesting guy and yes. uh, funny as hell, you know, uh, troubled, you know, a lot of trouble. He was always seemed to be going through a lot of trouble in his life but how he uh, weathered it so graciously and honestly and uh, was just impressive for a young, you know, songwriter like myself to uh, to see. And uh, he was, you know, he let you in on his life, and, and that was that was quite a blessing to have so early on. Oh, absolutely! I can only imagine. Um, I'm just curious about your thoughts on the evolution of the music industry as it is today, because during your time it was so so very different. But we didn't have the uh, capability that we have now for musicians to form their own record company, their own labels, or their own publishing company, or their own uh, distribution company. What are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a, a great evolution. Um, and I think, but with it comes a lot of responsibility, and mostly in terms of learning. You have to learn, you know, it's one thing to just have the name of a record company or a publishing company, but it's another thing to know how to be an effective publisher and get covers and get songs placed in film and TV and sync licenses and master purchase licenses and things like that. 
so there's a lot of learning that comes with that uh, ability. And same with a record company. Uh, you can get your records all over the world, but you need to know how to monetize that, how to promote it, what effective ways are there are of promoting uh, records and what ways to avoid, you know, in which you can be taken advantage of. So uh, I love it because, you know, I'm, I'm an artist first, and I love to see the little guy has power, so to speak. So, um, um, uh, so you know, I just, I, I love, I, I think that's a good, a good uh, change in the, uh, the in, in the industry. Oh yes, uh, and I'm glad to hear you say that. I just want to mention that we are broadcasting live on my Facebook page, and your fans are saying, I just have time real, real, real quickly to read some of the comments. Gregory Abbott is such a positive and inspirational artist. Love it. Uh, I remember performing uh, a family barbecue for family when I was younger. A song of choice was the Gregory Abbott, Shake You Down. Uh, he inspired me. They're loving you. And you, like I said, you inspired so many of us around the world, whether we spoke the English language, we could we could speak Japanese or we could speak um, uh, uh, German or Russian, whatever. Your music transcends. Your music wow. has staying power, Gregory Abbott. I just want you to know that. And I just want to thank you for that. It has staying power. Uh, I have a couple more questions. Why do you continue making music? Um, because I have to. It's in my blood and, you know, it, my communication with the world. It's the way I interpret events that I go through in life. It's the way I interpret what I see my friends uh, go through. It's how I make sense of life. And um, so I do it because I have to. And, you know, long before I started making money or I had a career in it, I did it because I had to, and that, that stuck with me. And um, it brings me such joy and, um, and such inspiration. That, that pretty much sums it up. I do it because I have to. And I thank you for continuing to give us the best form of art. Let's talk about your new music. You have, you on your, for all those who are listening via our live streaming at Gregory Abbott's website by going to www.gregoryabbott.com. He's got lots of cool videos, some performances, some new music. Just go there, write it down, gregoryabbott.com, and you will find all that you need to know. I have to ask you this question. Recently, you performed in Memphis, Tennessee. Tennessee with some of my favorite R&B and soul artists of all time, such as Peebo Bryson, Denise Williams, just to name a couple. What was that experience like? Oh, wow, that was wild. Um, the, every, the temptations were on, on the bill, uh, the stylistics, Denise, as you mentioned, Melba Moore, Peebo, uh, Regina Bell. Um, it was wonderful, and it was a concert for me because when, we, when I wasn't performing, I was sitting backstage listening listening to all this train of wonderful acts and I was singing every single song. I mean, every song I knew and then I'd be back there with maybe some of the other artists or background singers and we'd all be singing it in harmony. So we were having our little personal concert backstage and then uh, and uh, and listening to this wonderful show. And it was fun rehearsing with them. It was fun hanging out with folks like Dennis who knows everything in, about the industry and sit down and talk and talk with him and uh, and trading stories and getting little wisdoms. So it was a blast. I, I, I love uh, I love doing that show and we'll be doing, you know, more of those. Oh, and I can't wait. I cannot wait to have you here in New Orleans. Uh, one of your fans in New York wants to know, do you plan on coming to New York anytime soon? Yeah, uh, that's on the agenda probably within the next four months. Awesome. Uh, we plan to uh, swing and spend a little time in New York. I, uh, not too long ago, moved from the East Coast, from New York to California. And uh, so I haven't been, as ba been back as much as I'd like to, but uh, we're going to start remedying that and, uh, you know, making more trips back East. Your fan, Richard Wilson, shout out to Richard Wilson. He goes, I am there. He can't wait, fans. <laughs> can't wait uh, to see you. Okay, uh, I want to ask you. How do you maintain such an incredible physique, your skin, your body? You look just as young now as you did when you first stepped on the scene. What are you doing? Are you a vegan? Do you exercise? <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
I am a, a vegetarian, although occasionally I eat fish. Um, I'm really, really strict on my diet and and supplements and and you know eating all the good stuff. I try and um, I ride my bike a lot and play basketball to keep uh, healthy. I uh, do a lot of hiking, especially out here in the West Coast. We hike down to the sea, and we hike up in the mountains and spend a lot of time uh, in nature. I find that I love to exercise outdoors more than I love to exercise indoors. And uh, and more than anything, probably just uh, work every day to keep good thoughts in my head, uh, to keep a good vibe surrounding me, and which... It seems that once you have that in you, it starts. You start to see that outside of you, and you know you, your friendships improve. Uh, new friendships come into your life that are on your same vibe. So, I think uh, your mental, your mental state, your mental attitude is important to to every day work on keeping that headed in the direction uh, that you want it to be headed in, and. Uh, Thanks for saying all that, boy. You, you just made everything you said has made my morning. Today's going to be a good day for me. <laughs> you, you started it off the right you've, way. You've made my year. <laughs> what can I say? I have to really <laughs> pinch myself. And I, I know that we have people with Essence. We love you, Essence. Uh, Time Inc. and the Chamber Group. Thank you. I love you guys. Uh, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you guys on uh, having Saint Beauty, Wonderland uh, Records, recording artists on my show. And uh, you guys need to get with Gregory Abbott. You know who he is. He's in the radar. And fans are wanting Gregory Abbott. I want him here. New Orleans. Essence Music Festival. Festival. This is what we want. Give the people what they want, right? There's a song back in the day, Give the People What They Want. We want Gregory Abbott. Is there anybody that you listen to today? Any new artists that you like? Oh, yeah. Um, let me see. Uh, well, I love uh, I love innovative stuff. Like, I like, uh, there's an artist, her name is Lord. I, l- I like her. I like Adele. Um, I like the voices, uh, like Celine Dion. Um, I like Anthony Hamilton's voice. Oh, yeah. Anthony Hamilton. Mm. Yeah. I love Aaron Neville. I mean, yeah. always have. And I, I heard recently he has a new thing uh, com- coming out or, uh, or just recently released. Am I right about that? Well, I haven't heard, but I'm going to get my assistant to look into that because we definitely would love to invite him here. He's a staple. You cannot think of New Orleans and you don't think about the Neville brothers or Aaron Neville. Yeah, absolutely. What advice would you give to young aspiring artists? Um, I would say, first of all, learn your craft. Uh, if it's an instrument, study your scale. If it's a, a polyphonic instrument like a piano or guitar, learn your chord. Uh, learn to read music. And complementary to that, learn about the business of music. So learn your contracts, learn your licensing, learn what publishing is. And it's important that he, you know, study the, how music is made available on the Internet. And then beyond that, um, keep it, you know, it, you know, once you develop expertise in what you do, and if you come at it with the right heart and with the right spirit the money will come so service first money comes later and so keep growing in your craft you know always vocalize every day if it's singing that you do and just become better and better and better and evolve in that and the rewards will come uh will flow naturally from that and uh you know keep music the beautiful thing it is and be authentic yeah don't you're not in competition with other acts you are i I like the more cooperation i like to see more of like what you're doing sharing information and um, encouraging other people and, and, and inspiring other people. It, it makes music fun. It's no fun when it's a competition, you know, a crabs in a barrel kind of thing where if you go up, that means I perceive that as me going down. I think there's room for everybody and uh, and it's much more fun that way and we can all uh, help each other a lot. Oh, you're such a breath of fresh air. You're like my bright sunshine this morning on a rainy day here in New Orleans. <laughs> you are my bright sunshine. I just want to thank you so very much for honoring our listeners this morning, for giving up your time. I know that you have a very, very busy schedule, but I just want to thank you on behalf of the world uh, because we have regular listeners from all over the world, and I just want to say thank you so very much. And uh, I, I just have to let you know out of all 
all the songs you've ever written, composed, recorded, Shake You Down is my mm-hmm. favorite. I want to thank you for helping us make radio cool again. Good morning, everybody.